I am so excited to paint with you. You have been a friend so many years now, and um, I have missed sketching with you in person. We used to get out and sketch together around the Seattle area, and that was so much fun. I agree. I agree. I'm going to also be streaming here um, just so I can see what's going on on the screen. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, Che, I wonder if getting started, uh, if you'd want to share, you know, a little bit of your art background. I know you pretty well, but um, let, you know, other folks know some of your background with art. You're, you're so multi-talented <laughs> and uh, we can dive on in. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, let's see. So for one thing, can you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, well, um, yeah, so my background, uh, I am a local boy here in the Northwest. I have um, went to Cornish. Um, I got my degree in illustration design. Um, but uh, I've, been, I've been an animator. Um, I've been a graphic designer, web designer, illustrator. Um, now I, uh, I, also, I also used to own a gym, Team Eastside. Shout out to Team Eastside and my folks in Team Eastside. I had a gym for about 10 years. Uh, I used to teach uh, boxing, MMA, a little bit of everything. So I used to punch with these hands, also uh, paint with these hands. So um, <laughs> Take good care of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm really surprised that I actually did not injure my hands. But luckily, you know, this is, you know, this is boxing. It's not street fighting. So we had gloves and wraps and all that kind of stuff. But, <laughs> but uh, currently I, uh, well, Lately, since this whole thing started, I teach a lot of online classes. I teach for uh, uh, I teach for the Kirkland Art Center, Pratt, uh, Cloud Nine, and then also myself. So um, um, I've been kind of busy with that. I teach in most at all mediums: watercolor, acrylics, oils, pastels. I do uh, some um, animation classes, uh, Procreate. Uh, I'm I try to be versatile in what I do. I guess. Um, I prepare myself for anything that might happen. So that's kind of how I roll. Um, and but, uh, uh, years ago when we met, we met through Daniel Smith, um, through doing yes. demos there. And so I feel like we, with your time at Daniel Smith, you did, you know, also just so much, many wonderful demonstrations and experiments with all of your materials. And um, yeah, yeah Daniel really Smith. Yeah, Daniel Smith is a great place for the fact that, you know, I used to work there um, part time uh, when I had my gym. I needed um, I, I figured I should, um, you know, get back into the world of art. Uh, so I got a part time job at Daniel Smith while uh, in, the, in the mornings and in the evenings I would go to my gym. So it was uh, there were long days, but, um, you know, running my own business, you know, silly me going, oh, I would, uh, you know, have the gym open in the evenings and then I would paint all morning. But no, running a business is like a 24 hour gig. Um, so I really had to force myself to uh, to get a, you know, to get a job, you know, at that or anywhere so I can um, or at, especially at Daniel Smith. So at least I was in the art community. And then with that, I kind of started doing demos and, um, you know, really meeting great artists like yourself um and um and uh yeah and then again the pocket palette uh was one of those <laughs> things i always i always talk about it and i always tell all my students about it i'm a huge fan um, well you were I, one of my first supporters too che like the ve as soon as i first started tinkering around, <laughs> around with them you have one of like my original originals um which are you still using i mean i keep sending you new ones to try out but i mean I, like... <laughs> I i i have don't get me wrong i have them and you know, uh, I have them, but something I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm loyal, right? So to me, this is you. This is you. <laughs> oh, you sweetheart. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna give my, I'm not gonna switch to a new friend. This is my Maria right here. This is Mar I, I actually call her. Mar this is Maria. This is Maria right here. Um, oh. And so yeah. So to me, this is kind of, and, but I did set up this smaller one, which I, I love the new one. The new designs are great. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're great. Mm, I love show, the show whole... us, Bring that little dummy out. Show me what you've got in there. And uh, I have to tell everyone too, that Che, you are like my friend. I call when I want to <laughs> geek out about any supply or agonize about colors. You are that artist friend. When my husband is sick of me talking about, <laughs> you know, the various hues of pink I should have in my palette. I call you up and, and you listen to me, which I appreciate. So um, 
but but boy, I'm lusting after that little palette color fill of yours you have already. Can you share what's in it? Sure. So just my base. I'm very. I'm a very simple. As in, you know, when I paint, I have the same colors. Um, uh, very, I'm very minimal in what I have, uh, but. Pretty have my yellow uh, Hansa yellow medium on the very bottom, the big ones, the ones I would probably use the most. Hansa yellow medium, quinacridone coral, uh, cobalt blue. This is my neutral tint. Mm. Above here is uh, sepia, cobalt teal blue, um, quinacridone burnt orange, and uh, yellow ochre. Oh, so I those are kind it. of my go-to painting, go-to go colors, I would say. Oh, I know what I'm doing this weekend, Shay. I'm going to build myself one of your palettes to play with. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, well, this, you know, I kind of, well, I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to say, oh, Shay has the original palette and has, you know, so I was like, okay, you know what? Maria was nice enough to send me a few of these smaller palettes and I'm going to fill one up. So I did, but I actually like, I love. I love the way it looks. I love how clean it looks because nothing in my studio is this clean, including me. <laughs> I mean, this this thing has been has been through the ringers. Like I said, this thing is. I'm even sure. I'm not even sure how old it is, but um, but it's a testament to the quality of your stuff. Look at that. I think that's I probably mean, like 2012 or 13. There, Jay. girl. It's yeah. yeah, it's something. But no, it's it, you well, know, thank you. It's, it's oh. not. It's not dirty. It's it's you know things <laughs> don't rust. And it's like, listen, I have more wear and tear than than this palette does. Um, so I think I'll end up breaking down before it will. Uh. Um, oh, well, uh, <laughs> sending love right back at you, Che. Hey, can you show us some of the other things that you like to carry when you go out sketching? And the other thing is we were preparing some paper for today and you were like, this is the small, you know, small side of what I ever work. You go out side and often like sketch like full sheet watercolor paper. I've seen you do not well, always with the pocket palette. You, you scale up, but I love that you you dive in when you're outside with, you know, whether a small sketchbook or big and you've got your kind of stash of tools, would you be willing to share some of your other favorite, you know, yeah. maybe some of your brushes or um, kind of your, your yeah. kit you carry? Yeah. So these are, well, these are the ones I carry the most are, are these guys here. These are the ones that you, that you, you gave me uh, that you uh, were nice enough to, to send my way. So okay. again, I love the, um, the mops, the mop brushes like this. <laughs> I got to share a funny story about your squirrel mop too, is, <laughs> right? <laughs> so right after um, I first learned about uh, rosemary brushes from my friend Jane Blundell, Blundell, we hung out. And whenever I hang out with you, we have to share all our tools. And Jane had given me a squirrel brush. So I immediately gave it to you so I could order a stash. And I'd forgotten until I saw that Jane has her name on that original brush. And she taught me to label my brushes too. And that just cracked me up. <laughs> There I'm it so is, right there. Using it. <laughs> Notice Pass, what I did is I along good tools. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, uh, Jane, I, I appreciate. It. Thank you very much. She's just sharing <laughs> the love. Um, it's in good hands. I know that uh, it's funny because I did. I you know I didn't want to put anybody on the front street, so I kind of turned it slightly so you wouldn't see it. But Maria went ahead and uh, got good eyes <laughs> and confessed the world to everybody. Um, yeah, so you know, these are some of you know my flat brush, uh, Ooh, my mop brush, uh -huh. which which I love, and I wish I had a bigger one. I'm not sure if they make bigger ones. These are hard to find. Yeah, at um, least not in the travel. But you know, um, I have a box of goodies coming soon from um, Rosemary with some other things to play with, and I'll keep you posted and keep everyone yeah, posted because yeah. they make really good brushes. Shout out to Rosemary. Shout out to Rosemary. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard about Rosemary. Yeah, definitely. But um, I have also used my Escoda um, natural uh, natural Kalinsky or not Kalinsky. That there's their red hair. I'm not sure exactly what it uh -huh, is. Like but, sable. Uh huh. Yeah, they're sable. Listen, I I'm back when I started doing watercolor. Um, uh, I you know you have to you have to, you have to have you have to have good natural hair brushes. And these days, you know. There's no need to. The brushes are so amazing these days. So you don't have to have fancy brushes. You can have synthetics and they work just as great and even sometimes just better. And they're 10% of the cost, you know, of a natural hair brush. So I use a lot of natural hair brushes because they hold a lot of water, you know. So I have these guys here. Then I have the Daniel Smith when they, when they were making brushes, which is my biggest one here. My oh, yeah. Travel Kalinsky, size 12. I think um, thanks to you, I've got a size eight of one of those. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah. So I have, I have, yes. So I, yeah, I have the whole set of those. Um, and uh, you know, and again, just my regular uh, sketch pencil. Uh, I've been using a, you know, I've been using this lately. Um, mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, uh, those are so those are just so sexy. They're beautiful. Like they're yeah, nice. I like the I like the sound, the clip clip kind of thing where they kind of kind yeah, of the point collapse. retracts. This yeah, is that, retracts. Um, Gear one thousand made by Pentel. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I really enjoy this one, um, but for the longest time I was using um, my this one. My is it Cartagosho? It's a little bit thicker lead, and so for mm -hmm. larger paintings, I I use this, um, and then. Uh, is that like a that's like a lead holder you've got it's there? like a lead holder yeah with uh I, th I don't know three three millimeter lead um, uh-huh cool and then again my my love the the love of my life uh when it comes to pens at least um is going to be my pencil brush pen this oh. thing is what i love and i know you marie you love the scratchy scratchy you like no, to you like introduce me to that i love it too but i, I do love scratchy scratch pens you love ripping that poor paper to shreds it just like 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 <laughs> putting your finger on chalkboard like, I, that's the one thing i remember besides you uh when, we're, when we're, we would go out to paint besides you doing like these panoramic views don't you I'm, like, judge my little in. scratchy scratch <laughs> and then this, and I hear this geek, 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 geek. i'm like what are you doing girl um Okay, but that, yeah. okay, I, I resign. But um, <laughs> I, I, the Pentel brush pen, you got me hooked on that too. We'll have to show yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I like, I like to master, you know, I'm, I'm mastering the brush strokes, you know, I'm mastering, yeah. you know, like, you know, this being becoming the extension of my hand. So in a lot of ways, that's why I use the Brintel, the Pentel brush pen yeah. um, to keep practicing when I'm sketching. So um, yeah, well, hey, um, let's dive in. We talked about for this doing kind of checking out like your approach to landscape. And then you went ahead and found a reference photo that um, I'll, I can bring up on camera and um, we can post, I'll post my stories afterwards that I find thoroughly intimidating, Che, because I like hanging out in places like Alaska <laughs> and Greenland where there's, there's not like a bunch of buildings. There's like big skies and icebergs often. And this is from your recent trip kind of recent we've all been locked up for a little while but um, yeah l last summer to cuba no it was actually in november, november. It was, yeah it was uh, it was november in, in cuba yeah, yeah. A, a dream trip yeah yeah and so uh yeah walk me through this I, i'm gonna kind of tag along with your approach here um because i'm um <laughs> oh lisa i see side oats down there lisa we can handle it we're uh pulling out pulling out uh but I love your, your approach to painting. You, you'd like dive in with color and um, yeah, I'm open. So you, yeah. you, you up for kind of walking us through this? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, I, I was not very good with landscapes or with uh, cityscapes and I'm the type of guy like I'm not good at something since, since I teach a lot. I teach, an, I teach a whole bunch of different classes and especially my intermediate to advanced class, I try to push myself and also my students. So, uh, Cityscapes are tough. I'm not an architect. The people I follow, like Thomas Schaller, Alvaro Castaneda, even Ron Stoke, um, these guys are, you know, were, you know, well, I know that Thomas Schaller was a, an architect at, one, at some point. And these, uh, you know, Ron and Alvaro are, you know, master craftsmen in how yeah. they draw and paint. So I just want to get better with that. And then getting better with that, I kind of fell in love with it. And so well, that, that, that's gonna... such a good attitude to just be continuously learning and pushing your comfort zone. And I confess it's something I'm you know, I think I could use the nudge more too. I get hooked into my little world of um, atmospheric, grayish, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Landscapes. But um, in pushing ourselves, then we can bring back to the familiar some really fun new tools and perspectives. So I, I appreciate this. And I'm going to courageously tackle this today with you, Che. Okay, well, well, sounds good. I mean, again, this is a small little piece of paper. Well, to me, it's small. This is a, like a six by 12 or six by 10 or 11 like that. Uh, the, I don't, you know, it's really much, much the size of my, you know, a little bit over the size of my hand. Um, so, uh, you know, I was gonna start, you know, I kind of have this idea of what to do. So I, this is the picture I have here is, uh, or the picture Maria shown is um, the, uh, the Capitalio, which is the capital in Cuba, in little Havana. Havana mm -hmm. Vieja. And so um, it's funny how the government buildings are like modern and beautiful. And then like you can see how the, you know, the houses where people live are just, you know, they're beautiful in their own kind of old way. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stretch out the composition. I like this. Uh, I'm going to have the, the Capitolio here right in the middle. I'm going to just kind of roughly put in, um, you know, the 
and I'm, you know, again, very lightly, you, and I, you know, you can't really even see this in, in, you know, over the stream, but trust me, when the paint comes, you're going to be like, that's amazing. And that's how all my students talk, by the way. They, oh, that's <laughs> great. I, I like some of your, I think some of your boxing coaching has come over to your art. You are such a warm I, and generous person to paint with. And, uh, <laughs> I like harassing my students. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of my charm, I guess. Uh, so harassing, um, you keep up the good verbal banter. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, you know, you're 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 here with you know, mm. especially when my classes are two hours, some are three hours, and you have to keep them entertained. Are you not entertained? And well, so I tell that's you, Che, I've I never do. been intimidated by you, and I don't think you've been intimidated by me. Well, I'm glad. That's one Even thing about that I love about you. That's <laughs> the one thing I love about you, Maria. I've had a lot of friends like, Che, we should paint. Or people that I met at Daniel Smith, and they're like, yeah, we should paint. I say, yeah, I would love to. And, you know, these are men, women, all, all sorts of ages. And then, you know, I tell Maria, just like, oh, yeah, Maria. Or you just said, we should paint. I said, okay, yeah, here's my number, whatever. No one's ever called me to paint. And so my my sweet friend Maria, she calls me, hey, Che. I'm like, what? It's Maria. We should go paint. And I was just so, like, at that point, I'm like, this girl's a friend for life. For one thing, she called me, one, and she wasn't scared of this monster. Um, so I, I appreciate that. That's one of the oh, stories that oh, I do tell. You, uh, <laughs> you, you undersell yourself there, Che. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, okay. my Maria called me. She wanted to come and paint with me. It was, it was, it was sweet. Because, like I said, I ain't gonna. Lie. I, I'm not lying. I have talked to a lot of people, and they have not called me back, or not even bothered to call me back. Well, so. I hope we get to paint more in person. And I have to say too that as a parent, you've been a bit of a mentor for me, and passed on clothes from your sweet family. Um, so you've got two kids. I do and, have uh, a your daughter's older than mine, and you've got a little boy too. I have a I have a ten year old and a four year old. Uh, my four year old being the young uh, my boy and uh, my girl, which she's kind of been doing these online um, art time with Milagros on my art of chat page on Facebook. Um, this is the first time actually me doing anything on Instagram, which I'm I'm kind of interested to see. Seems like a lot of people on here. I think uh, I might have to do some more Instagram stuff and. Um, so I'm just going to leave this image up to a, uh, a moment longer. So I, for the record, I am sketching as well. But I thought if anyone wants to sketch along, they can follow. And um, oh, your image is looking so nice, Che. Well, I don't, well, thank you. I'm just. So uh, are you like counting every window or do you just like. Oh, like. No, no. <laughs> the essence. The, there's no. Well, no, I know there's. There, you know, you I, can't I'm here and I'm window. like window, window, window. But they're just shapes. They're just, so I'm just shapes to just figure shapes, out where yeah. things are going to be. And then yep. the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in my blue. So I'm going to put down my first wash here. Okay, and okay, wait, kinda... wait, wait, like, oh, oh, oh. wait, wait, like 30 okay. seconds to put down a okay, wash. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm going to leave the picture up just in case anyone's feeling the same way I am mm. in that I am catching up. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, no. You, I, listen, I always tell my students, so like you used to, you tell the bald man to slow down because, uh, you know, I get, I get down. I get excited about painting. You know, I listen, I call myself Bald Ross. So. I think that is so <laughs> awesome. I saw you start that and it just made me laugh, Che. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, I do these little painting parties uh, in some of my schools and um, uh, I was going to do Brown Ross and then one of my students go, you should say Bald Ross. I said, oh my sweet. I said, that's beautiful. And so I have been Bald Ross ever since. And so, um, yeah, uh -huh. no, I, I do. I do love, I do love, <clears throat> you know, I learned so much from Bald, from Bob, Bald Ross, from Bob, from Bob Ross. Unknowingly, he has been, um, you know, he kind of, kind of sort of brainwashed me and not brainwashed me, but just kind of, he's like my subconscious. Uh, whenever I think of anything, I think of uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Bob Ross. Yes. Yeah. But, um, no, I'm reading some of the things. A uh, little, uh, what was it? A little me, a little Hugh. Uh, yes. I. Ross from Cloud Nine. That is me. See, I'm famous or, <laughs> or infamous. I don't know which one it is. Um, <laughs> okay, so Jay, I got a question. Like, you have background too. So I think something that often intimidates people about like cityscapes is perspective and kind of making it look right. And some people have more drawing experience than others and like draftsmen 
you know, actually having taken classes. Are there any shortcuts that like you found or recommend to, if someone's out sketching a landscape that um, they, they can use as a, as a tool for put these things together? Well, I think uh, not really, there's no really shortcuts. I think what you need to do is um, start with a one point perspective as in maybe, you know, um, finding a scene that has don't have that you know maybe you're not staring at a corner of a building so you're not dealing with two-point perspective maybe just sit you know have a little flat so you just have maybe your one you have a one-point perspective where you maybe have just one road going to the distance so simplify things starting with one point perspective and then once you get an idea you can use you know, your if you're not sure where the horizon line is, what you can do is usually the horizon line is going to be our eye level. And so what you want to do is either get a get a pencil or, you know, get your pencil, your brush and kind of um, scan the, the 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 landscape and see where the flat, you know, a flat area of the building or or a tree or something like that is. And that's where you start. That's where you start for building from, right? Where your where um, the where your uh, your focal point is, or your um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, 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 oh, I literally just uh, forgot what I was going to say. See, I was so excited about painting that um, I forget things. Uh, horizon line, thank you. The horizon line, and um, what you can do is uh, you know there's great uh, uh, one point and two point perspective uh, quick demos on. Um, on 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 uh on YouTube where you can just kind of you know we all kind of know but the thing is just trying to break it down a scene because sometimes mm -hmm. you, you the you know the horizon line is missing because it's behind trees or behind cars or buildings so a great way is usually the horizon line is going to be your eye level yeah and so just yeah. keep that in mind all right Let, let's let's dive in and I just want to note one more thing as we dive in is yeah. that you did not worry about drawing every detail too. You've just gotten the big shapes and like, you're not worrying about all these balconies and things on the side. You've just got these big shapes that, of the left, right and center here. So Cor that's something yeah, correct. I'm gonna cool. let my, I, I like to let my brush do most of the work for me. And what this does like anything else, the more detail we put in, the more we try to stay within the lines. Um, so what I try to do is Jedi mind trick myself. So therefore I don't, I, I just, <laughs> put the basic structure, the, 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 the skeleton of it. And then I built, I let my brush do most of the work for me. So that's right. usually my plan for this. Let, let, let's do this. I'm going to follow you. All right. So I'm going to grab just, I'm going to switch. Oh, I'm going to do some blue. I'm going to get some blue. So I think this is cobalt or cerulean. Okay, and I'm going to start. And you didn't pre-wet. You're just diving in. Oh, it's such a small piece of paper. Forget yeah. about yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's a baby paper. I can do three strokes. I'll be done. <laughs> no, um, uh, so I'm going to start with this, this light and I'm using arches rough a little bit. Um, oh, rough. Right, a little I usually use cold press. Okay, cool. Oh, so you're just, you're, and you're just flying around. There you go. Well, yeah, this, this is, this is, look, this is not even painting it. This is just me, uh, you know, just getting the paper wet with a little bit of color. And, you know, you're since I to think. Me, who, I like to do my like nice, even oh, washes. And I know. I know. Now, look, look, we don't have to paint the same way. I'm just, like I said, you. You push my comfort zone sometimes, and that's okay. <laughs> and that's what that's what's all about. That's you know, why I, I like hanging with you. I've learned a lot from you too. So, um, so what I'm gonna do now is put some um, lighter. Let's see. Uh, there's some blue in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some purple. So I'm gonna mix up some purple. And usually, you know, actually, and so you put a there. little bit of blue on the building on the side. And like, I'm kind of imagining there's some of the shadow coming down. On everything, the side, everything so. builds, everything builds. And so mm -hmm. let me put a piece of tape underneath. So again, I, I painted a, a slight angle. Mm -hmm. And so this will help the water kind of flow down a little bit easier. Um, cool. I'll, I'll put up my little prop too. And so, I, you know, I always tell my students, make sure you have your supply set up correctly. So if you're right-handed, make sure your paper and your paints are on your right-hand side and your water so you're not crossing across your, your painting. So I got to also remember that also. Yeah, that makes a difference. Because then if you're working fast, you, um, you know, I, I remind people to like pre-mix their colors. Because then when you're working, you're not fighting against, um, you, you know, the paper drawing. We've got this timer when painting. All right, yeah. so you've got a little bit of your favorite quinacridone coral there. Oh, yeah. Do you, so, use, do you use quinacridone rose or is coral kind of your favorite? I just use one. I just, I'm not a smart person. Uh, so oh, therefore, I just, I, 
<laughs> I use the same colors at, from, for I don't even know how long. Um, so to me, that's kind of, you know, I simplify these you find, things. You, you find know? what you like and you stick with it, which is good I, advice yeah, too. Yeah, well, it, it just becomes a sec, it, it, it's things that I don't have to worry about, um, you know, remembering. It just, I, I'm no longer battling on my palette because I mm -hmm. know exactly what I have. And so I don't have to worry about, oh, I got, what color is this? It yeah, just becomes yeah. a second nature to me. And so, so is that now don't burnt orange you've got over there on the uh, right side. Uh, yeah, I'm burnt orange. I have a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm just kind of mixing and putting in these kind of darks. Um, maybe put a little bit of, let's see where sepia is a little and bit tell here. Me, tell me too, people, I get a lot of questions about like wetness of brush versus what's going on the paper. So tell me about like, are you going and like working with a pretty wet brush when you're going in or um, like drying it on a paper towel before putting it on the paper? Yes. Yeah, so I have a, I have a couple different sponges, but here's a sponge right here. And so I use a sponge. And so, you know, one, some of the things that are the stinkiest in my studio besides me are going to be my sponges. And, <laughs> um, and so therefore I just kind of, uh, if I'm noticing that my brush has a lot of water paint, I would tap it on my sponge and then go into my painting. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to put a little bit of warmth down here, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of yellow, and let this just kind of, see these, see these strokes, masterful strokes of that, boom. Oh, just yeah. Okay. I'm letting it too. Just, so just I like, like that. I like that yours are a little warmer. I'm going to warm mine up. So just like that, just, just to give a little bit of warmth. So I think I'll put some, I don't know, maybe some people a little later or something. Um. And then you, you, you're doing some of this beautiful greenish, and I wasn't listening. I'm, I'm assuming it's Hansi Yellow Medium and Cobalt, because I know your palette. And I think that's a really good point to get to know your palette. Like my big studio colors, I use the same, and I have to look at my palette the same way all the time, or I can't use it, because I'm like, no, the blue belongs, you know, in the, on the upper corners. <laughs> um, yeah. Otherwise, I get confused. Um, and, uh, but I confess, I love experimenting with color too, which is where with the art toolkits, I'm, um, it's fun to tinker with offering, you know, different palettes and different um, palettes of place and mixes. Cause man, color is fun to play with. Um, and uh, Jay, uh, I see a comment of someone curious where you are. And I, I forget if I'd actually mentioned where you are. So <laughs> I'm on planet earth. <laughs> Hello humans. Uh, you're you're closer in... to me though. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a, uh... Muckle Teal, South Everett. I live in I live in the Pacific Northwest. I hear, um, so yeah. I I can if I squint if I look if I with binoculars I can see Maria across the across the Puget Sound here. We're not too um, far away. Not too well. I wish it was closer, but you left. You I left. did. I did. I moved. <laughs> we used to be just a quick short hop, skip, and a jump, and I I decamped for Port Townsend, which you have yet to visit me here. I mean, kids, kids I know, keep us I know. busy, but you'll, you'll, you'll get out here uh, sooner I do, or later, you know, I hope. I do, I know, I know, it's, uh, and I gotta do that. I think what, what I'm learning now is, uh, you know, the, um, well, as an artist, you're kind of, I'm, I'm kind, you know, how would you say? Set your um, ways. <laughs> not set my, yes, well, that's just because I'm getting older, but thank you for that. Um, uh, no, it's just what? like, we're, you know, we get stuck in, like, right now, I'm in quarantine, I really don't, I don't notice it. I mean, I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, so uh, to me, it's not a, it's not a big, of, that's not too big of a deal. Um, yeah, and then I'm just gonna tell everyone that we're gonna have a, um, we'll all have this recording up for sure. It'll be posted first to the IGTV of At Art Toolkit, and then I'll be posting the recording to YouTube um, and linking from our website. And um, yeah, we'll, we can go over colors again for sure. And Che, are you gonna like let this dry now? Or do you just- I am I am going to let it dry a little bit and uh, mm -hmm. well, as we're talking, I'm not sure if we have time for me to quit, do a quick blow dry. Um, oh, I, I bet we could. If everyone okay. doesn't mind like turning down their volume for a second. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna um, go if we whip out quick... our hair dryers. All right, everybody, we apologize for the noise, but we're you know gonna whip out. I'm gonna show I'll off, this my, is my little one. Having I'll always lived in, in like, oh, look at that. Having always lived in, in, in small spaces, I like you gravitate can... towards small tools. So even my hair dryer is small. This is this like Nano Baby Bliss Pro Nano Titanium. Um, but there's and, my uh, small little chelito there. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'll put up uh, the reference photo for one more minute while we do a quick dry. Hey, um, while we tell you done there, Che.
Would you believe that um, I, uh, I can't stand using my hair dryer usually. <laughs> I like to work on multiple pieces to avoid it when I can. And I have these giant, like the giant construction earmuffs that I usually wear uh, when I use it. And then sometimes I forget to take them off. And so if my family walks in on me, my, um, my, uh, I get scared out of my wits when they startle me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, no, I, I, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, uh, it is what it is. I always tell my students either to, you know, mute me or whatever while I'm, air, while I'm blow drying, but. Oh, no, I mean, that about, was so quick. Do you hair dry on low or high? I go I high. Like I just, I go, I go, I go high. I go like, I, yeah, it's like, it's like the heat of the sun. <laughs> you go uh, high, I go low. I, I often do a little low first because sometimes if I'm working really <laughs> wet, it'll like blow the paint around and then, and then I blast it. All right. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, all these things, like, it's not a tight, see, notice it's not a tight, like, hard edge here. Yeah. And right now, everything's the same value. And then I call this a hot mess stage where mm -hmm. um you are yeah it's just kind of like oh what am i gonna do with this but yeah. this tells me i'm on the right track this tells me this is going to be an amazing painting um uh and so that's how you got to go into painting you got to always have a positive attitude if not you're you're going in kind of handicapped so go in thinking it's going to be an amazing painting and then um just go from there don't listen it's about having fun more than anything else so oh, just keep I that in mind i love that yeah see it through to the end and um yeah, have fun with that process. Um, I'm just going to mention, I think if I get this right, your colors in your little palette. You've got Hansi Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Coral, Cobalt Blue, Neutral Tint, Yellow Ochre, um, Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Burnt Orange. Oh, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Cobalt Teal Blue, and... Sepia. Sepia. Oh, of course you have sepia. You, you love sepia. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, I yeah. eat it with my cereal I every morning. I'm gonna go make that um, make that palette for me. <laughs> I have I have agonized over colors of you so many times. I know you have. And, like and if you were I, to add I, an extra color, like maybe sap green as a shortcut. And I um, always giggle. I always giggle like this <laughs> whenever you call me and you have like <laughs> agonizing over these colors. And I'm like, I'm trying like, to be that. I'm trying to be as nice as I can. Like Maria, you had it. Uh, you know, four weeks ago when we talked. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let, let, let's paint. Stop making fun of me. Let's paint. Okay. I enjoy it, though. I love it. But that's the okay, kind of okay. person I am. I try to harass people because, well, I have nothing else better to do. Um, but Yeah, paint. Let's put some paint on paint. paper now. So tell me what you've been mixing. I've been mixing just a kind of a grayish tone, and I've got some little blue with uh, some of my purple here. Um, and so I'm going to start painting in the cathedral area or the Capitolio, which is uh, mm -hmm. the building here. It's just kind of putting in... Maybe a little bit more of this cobalt. And you're teal using blue. like a fine. You're using a little bit of a finer brush. I'm like, uh, yes, not your yes. I'm using brush. my my squirrel fancy squirrel. Uh, and yes, unfortunately, squirrels were harmed in the making of this brush. But well, I heard they take them from the tail too. Yes. So there's a person. Thank you. There's a person that follows the squirrels around and then picks up every little hair that they drop. Yes, that's exactly what they do. Um. Okay. Yeah. And everyone, <laughs> if you want to watch, I did a demonstration with um Simi of um. Rosemary Paints, who talked more about some of their hairs. And um, coming soon, Rosemary just told me that we have um, like the only existing current batch right now of Rosemary R9 squirrels coming in the mail. They're, they've been waiting on supplies and found a stash that they're sending to us. I'm so excited. So um, next week, sign up for our mailing list. I'll be announcing them um, if they come in time by next week. So Sweet. here again is the picture. And so you're, you're just disregarding the gold of that and just going for like having it look in the distance, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, like, that's detail. Who, yeah, no. So a little creative license here. I, 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 I'm an artist. I, I, yes, you just, um, you paint what, how you want to paint and you just get the essence of it. If you start putting too much detail into these background elements, all of a sudden everything looks like it's in focus. And it becomes too much, too much going on. So how our minds work is, uh, I mean, I might put a little, you know what? Okay, I'll put a little bit of yellow in, in this area over here. But most of it's going to be just kind of blending in. Um, this is yellow ochre. And I'm just kind of lightly putting that in. I'm going to go ahead and put some little bit of these kind of um, purples and, and um, you know, little details. And I'm starting with this background element here because then... Uh, what I'm going to do later on is go ahead and put in the dark of um, of the buildings 
um, the size is going to make um, this stand out more. So, um, you know, this is a just, I'm not painting every window. I'm painting the essence, the feel of it. Um, to me, that's more important than just, oh, it's 12 windows. I got to make sure I have 12 windows. Um, that's the wrong, that's kind of the wrong way to do this kind of effect. Unless you're doing an architectural drawing, then yes, put 12 windows, but by no means. So do you have a favorite thing to paint, Trey? Oh, whatever I'm painting, Maria. Right now, <laughs> you, you are my favorite, well, you're my favorite painting partner, period. Um, but um, but uh, yes, whatever I'm painting, you have to be in the moment to do what we do, you know? Um, I, you know, because I get that question a lot and it's kind of corny. I kind of like, yeah, I just, whatever I'm painting <laughs> at the moment is my favorite, my favorite painting because that's what it's about, right? I mean, that's about if you're not enjoying what you're doing, why do it? Why are you painting what you're painting if you're not enjoying it? Mm -hmm. You so, have such a good attitude. I love your attitude. Oh, you have to. Well, you have to. Listen, I've had real jobs where I had to wear, I never wore a tie, but, you know, meetings and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, this is, this is great here. This is just me messing around, having a good time with my friend online um, or teaching with my, with my friends, uh, you know, um, and so you got to keep that kind of attitude going. Tell us, um, tell us about the workshops you teach. If anyone's interested, you do like bold and loose watercolor and like yes. multi week, right? So people want to, and now that they're online, like people from around the region can potentially come and paint with you. Right. So I just finished up again, the last week of my watercolor bold and loose. Um, and you can visit the art of Che on my Facebook page to get, um, information on that i'll be doing uh two uh four week uh classes um starting in um, end of june and july and then all of august so the first one's going to be an ocean as i think it's an ocean view which is going to be different views you know if it's going to be a seascape or those kind of things and then the second the second four weeks is going to be uh portraiture so oh, cool um so yeah so i'm gonna do and i also teach acrylics and oils so i'll be doing some uh the same the same um subjects and themes in my acrylics and my oil classes so and I'll, I'll post a link to your website if people haven't had a chance to check it out and you do these awesome like portraits too and the tradition of the day of the dead D i'm gonna, not going to pronounce it correctly. Dia de los muertos, Maria. Dia Dia de los muertos. Los muertos. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> and they're like super colorful and like a little bit scary and cool and <laughs> not scared you just you know, they're very expressive um, yeah I, I, super... I paint with i paint with color in mind you know, everything's gonna be very colorful and what i try to do um and so uh that's you know as a Chicano, I try to use my heritage or just kind of, that's kind of what I grew up with. I love those kind of elements. And I think, um, uh, you know, I know, I, I know some friends or some like Alvaro believes that painting with a lot of color is amateurish. I disagree with them with that. Um, I think that um, color is what makes our lives go round and round, right? I mean, I love color, but that's my culture. And so color, so therefore I, I, uh, I paint with a lot of color. And uh, we all, and we all get to like find out our, um, you know, what gravitate, like what we gravitate towards. Like that's part of finding your voice as an artist is just listening right. to that sort of inner like, hey, I really like doing this. And everyone, that's part of like us all just finding our paths, huh? No, definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, I always tell my students, that just paint the way you want to paint. I'll give you these techniques. I'm not here to change the way you, you see things. I'm here to teach you techniques and maybe I will never tell them that this is bad or anything like that. I'm here to make sure that you know what the wet and to wet, how, to, you know, usually it's contrast. People have, whenever I'm looking at someone's work, it's usually it's missing contrast. Mm -hmm. so, make your um, darks dark. That's the advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, Agreed. you know, right now I just kind of put a whole bunch of different colors that are coming down, adding a lot of warmth toward the bottom. Um, Cause I really want to have this sense of warmth coming here and kind of coming up. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, let me know uh, if you want, do you want me to continue so you can catch and up? I love, I mean, you're really doing your own take on this. I love that. And uh, that's really cool. Like, just like, so, so tell me though, like you took, you took some of the big, um, 
the big elements of this and simplify them. And then the other thing I notice is like with kind of the yellowish tone, you know, you're bringing in the complementary colors of more yellow to play off that kind of the yellow and sienna. So that helps for the, the colors right. to sort of work well together or the right, yellow right. and the ochre. Yeah. Yeah. I play with warms and cools. So I want with warm colors, the warm colors tend to come forward and cool colors tend to recede. So I play a lot with that compliments like my yellow, my purples. Um, and so, you know, where these will make, you know, and I don't really necessarily use black, but I make these complex blacks, which are going to be purples and really dark blues and oh, reds and those kind yeah. of things. So, because, you know, black is boring, it flattens things out. But if you, especially mm -hmm. with watercolor, it's so beautiful for the fact that you add a little water and all of a sudden you see some of those blues, you see some of those, some of those reds coming forward, coming out of that mixture. And so to me, mm -hmm. versus just a regular black, dark color you would use out of the tube, there's no, there's no other colors in there. It's just one flat value. To me, that's not what watercolor is about. So I yeah. mix all my secondary colors. Oh, I super love that. Though neutral tint is a good shortcut color. Like if you just want to like, I never, yeah, well, I, I also never use neutral tint all by itself. So I, yeah. I, none of the colors I use by myself, I, you know, it's got some blue, some yellow in here. Um, and so it just mixes in this initial um, kind of wash. Um, so, but what I'm going to do now. Oh, I love that, that cobalt teal you dropped in. I'm dropping in for a little, some in for oh. a little fun here. All right. Okay. Cobalt okay. Teal. What's next? Okay. So I'm going to start putting some dark. So I'm going to put, I'm using my flat, my flat brush here. How, how big flat. is that flat? Like half inch or so? It's a, yeah, about a half quarter. I don't, I don't know. I, I, went, I went to mm -hmm. art school. Girl, he's not talking about <laughs> art school, not math school. Come on. No, art hands. school, not math school. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm not going to buy that, but uh, okay, I'll pull out a flat. So She's in half a inch. With, I'm um, get a, I've got a little a rosemary flat out. they sent me to play with, and then I have a little like half inch flat here. Um, uh, and, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to watch what you're doing. I'm going to watch what I'm doing too. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's clear some of this. I don't know why I put yellow there, but. I cleaned up my palettes for you. Oh, I forgot to do one. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of That's palettes. The kind That's of one thing I... Well, these are, my, these are my two palettes I made for Alaska last summer, and I need to build some more palettes right now for me. She and when, when I go travel, like, I like to have all my colors so then I can sort of develop which ones I really want to be painting with in my studio. Because I, I do kind of switch. Like, I'll, I'll theme my paintings, or I'll have, like, a whole series of paintings using, like, five colors, and then I might tinker with like you know if i'm starting to paint something more green or in the, the north cascades versus the arctic like i change my colors up for that but that that's my approach so i like to like in the field i like all of my goodies and yeah. then i like to simplify but there's like freedom and simplifying too i think that's awesome okay Tom, I, love, I see you mixing some purple i'm mixing some purples using cobalt using french using using my red using my neutral tint just creating a beautiful you know a a, a complex dark value um, uh -huh. and i'm gonna start just putting in and so right okay. when i start putting this darker tone here you're gonna see how that's gonna make everything kind of come forward a little bit so a, um, a nice dark purple yeah and, and i'm just like i love that idea of the complex dark too that is such a good one yeah it's uh this is you know we can play around with these colors no one no one you know it doesn't doesn't matter and, and if so, you don't have the exact same colors as us like no worries you know to maybe try quinacridone rose or Okay, now you're using a little more like control. I am now, yeah, because you know we're talking about architecture now, so I'm gonna just kind of put in a little bit of these little lines in here, and I'm not painting in the whole shape, as mm -hmm. in I'm not going, oh, there's a window here. I'm just gonna I'm put in testing my color, uh -huh. just darking, just some darks. I'm also putting some red. I'm gonna grab some of this blue and just put some blue in here, and I'm just and like, you know, is that color that you already put in the purple or you're just pulling something? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, yeah, I, no, it's, it's, it's uh, the same colors, all the same blues, all the same reds, you know. Um, so they're already in that nice complex color yes, and you can bring correct. them out. Yeah. Correct. And so I'm also leaving in, leaving out some of, you know, like these dry brushes, dry brush yeah. strokes. So therefore it looks like, um, like instead of a building, you know, who knows, we maybe put in some people there later, later, who knows, whatever doesn't matter and just kind of breaking up that edge that's mm -hmm. the key breaking up that edge and as mm -hmm. i kind of come so it's down, not too uniform they, when things are uniform they tend to get a little more boring like exactly. flat flat washes of color or right and so as i'm going down i'm gonna use some cobalt teal blue here toward the bottom and just kind of a little bit here and i'm using arches paper so i love arches paper it's such a, an amazing paper um and so it, it's more expensive but 
it really does for me makes a difference but there's a lot of good papers out there and you um, with arches one. you can use like i don't know i always paint on both sides just for practice and you know i'm i'm constantly you know you you can really get the most out of your paper and and all sides if it doesn't turn into something you want to like stick on your wall and that's okay right no exactly so i'm gonna um, get some water down toward the bottom here and, and just boy, uh, i'm just gonna say one more note about like good paper is it's easier to paint with good materials like you can uh you're gonna find i think more success in your paintings with agreed a couple good brushes or a few good brushes good paint and um so again i just let it down here toward the bottom i just kind of let it just kind of melt away i'm gonna raise my camera up a little higher um Maybe turn this way. Oh, so fun. Kind of warmed it up. So you're just getting the feeling. Right, right. And so it just kind of softens. I'll do some brush strokes. So I do three, I call this a three-step painting. Mm -hmm. um, where, um, did I see you use? Yes, I, I am using, uh, I am using rough paper. Do you do that a lot? I, I don't have a lot of experience on rough. It's uh, so rough. I, I have, I have multiple of paint. So I have, a, well, your studio is full of more goodies than like an art store. <laughs> uh, yes, I cannot. I cannot. I, I've been hoarding for I've been waiting for this for this lockdown for, for, for <laughs> forever. Uh, so, yeah. So but yes, I am. Oh, my camera's getting all wonky on me. Anyways. Um, yeah, no, I have a whole bunch of different papers that I use. Um, and so I just kind of grab them. Uh, if it's hot press, cold press, rough, different makers. Um, you know, I use Fabriano arches. And so I just kind of use a variety of different. Um, okay, what color are you doing on the other side? You're warming I'm doing, it up on I'm the other a little side. I'm war a little bit warmer because uh, I don't want this to have the same kind of color theme. So a little yeah. warmer to top. Uh, so, But it's still going to be off that kind of purplish tone. Um, yeah. So maybe you'll have a little bit of the blue in it. Yeah, because every single time you, you go to the palette, your color's going to change anyways. And so and here you're getting the transparency of them, like overlaying what you had the first time. Exactly. See, and see that kind of the halo effect that was yeah. there in the very beginning? It's no longer there because you're putting your dark contrast. And you got to remember that, you know, in the very beginning, everything's the same value. And you're kind of going, oh, it's not, I'm not liking that. It's only because you haven't put your darks in. Once you put your darks in, everything changes and so that's when yes that's when it doesn't it's not going to matter too much tell your three uh, your three-step process finish that thought so there, it's huh? background <laughs> yeah i do the background middle ground would be uh would be the the, the building in the middle and then and then foreground elements so it's gonna be the darker elements so light medium and dark and also big shapes big values medium values and then dark and then smaller detail values in the foreground so what you break you know? it down that's to my three step process too jay <laughs> <laughs> what yeah i mean it's it's pretty simple i mean just break it down and the more you yeah. paint the yeah. more that you can uh that you can add in between those yeah. those yeah. layers um but in the very beginning just break the comp the, break your composition down to those three background middle ground and foreground and then um it, uh you Big just shapes, practice and you shape. get better uh -huh. yeah 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 um what i love about this is like i'm not worrying about getting like every shape of these buildings and like the lines super right i mean something i tell my students a lot is like it's better to paint confidently than super accurately <laughs> like versus a lot of little tentative marks to just lay it on um and uh with your approach here, we can be really loose, it seems, and not have to, you know, worry about everything being, every mark being just so, just having fun with the color. Right. And once you, once you're comfortable with what you have on your palette, uh, and you're not struggling with trying to create a certain color, and you just go with, you know, you, you, the, the basics, right? I'm, you, I'm creating compliments, you know, I got a little bit of warmth up here to tie in the warmth down here. Right, because mm -hmm. you want you want to be have those colors to be moving around your painting and not just blues and then yellows and therefore it becomes two paintings. Um, so I know uh, somebody hikes with SAS just said uh, struggles with hot press. So yeah, hot press is tough because hot press 
is like putting an iron on the paper, it flattens the fibers down. And so therefore the paper absorbs the water and the pigment kind of stays on top. So it's more of a painterly look. Illustration, illustrations are good for that. Ink work and then watercolor where with watercolor cold press, since the paper is, um, is, it, is kind of not flattened out, the fibers aren't flattened out, it absorbs evenly. So you get more of those kind of traditional watercolor looks. So yeah, yeah. Those are some of the things to, to you know, the differences in hot press and cold press. All right, so we're getting ready to tie this together uh, with, uh, I think we got about five, eight more minutes Instagram. We've got an hour for the demo. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I bet we can do it. I bet we can do it. Oh, no, good. I'm already done. No, no, You're, I'll just what? put a couple. You just need a couple <laughs> I'll put more a couple. Elements. I'll put a couple little, little details in here. So the key to this part now is I'm going to go since uh, I'm going to go into. You're the, back to the, the point. So you've got. The, you've got yeah, the center like, pointy here. brush, right? And just putting yeah. a little dry strokes in here, a uh, little bit of these uh, darker tones. Snap just together. to, yeah, just to get this little, you know, almost like, um, Whatever. They're just, uh, you know, think of these strokes as like a signature. Like we all have a different signature. Don't try to mimic somebody else's. Just kind of go with how you naturally um, create a stroke. And so I'm just kind of putting in these small little details here. Um, so these can be like those final little calligraphic strokes where they're crisp and. Right. And I'm just doing quick little strokes where the, where the, uh, the, the buildings are and the windows are I'm not trying to get too caught up with every window, every little. I think my black in the background was a little more stronger than I'd like. It doesn't receive quite as much, but I'm going to, I'm going to roll with it. Roll with the punches. Oh no, it's all good. It, it, again, it'll dry a little lighter. Yep. Yeah, no, watercolor is sneaky like that. It is. Always. A little so just quick, you know, I'm just, in the essence whatever little uh, shape i see i paint so um do you, when you're outside do you like squint or do things to help simplify seeing shapes? yeah squinting standing standing back um all of those things really help uh kind of what you're you know trying to paint um just stand back squint um i you know i squint all the time really um <laughs> when it comes to well <laughs> when you forget your glasses <laughs> that was yeah that was that wasn't even a joke but uh but uh i mean i squint all the time and just to kind of break you know break this this the simple kind of you know just to simplify the shapes that i'm looking at and um yeah yeah no i'm with you so okay um, so i have okay. these and we're getting a request if we might sneak a person into here we've got this nice walking person in front here um and oh, everyone, put, put, I'll, I'll upload this photo to uh, my Instagram. Sorry, I didn't get it get it up in advance. But um, if you want to get a good look at it and play again on your own, we'll have it up for a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now so you're just, a little you're, bit. And are you using your flat again, or still just using a little bit of flat? I'm using my flat just to yeah. give a little bit more. Uh, little maybe it's still pretty wet, so less yeah. water, more pigment at this point, and hydrodynamics. Yeah just kind of creating a little bit more. And at this point, you can actually scrape in um, some some elements. It's just a, a, let me get my, I don't have it here. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Anyways, it doesn't matter. I have this little flat scraper brush or a angle brush for, let's oh, see. Can you I move can your paper down so we can see what you're doing there? Oh, 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 yes. Um, so I'm gonna scrape in the edge of my brush here. Oh, fun. I'll grab my razor, razor blade. Razor blade's kind of tough because it's just, it, it can rip, so be very careful. Okay, and I'm just okay. creating a little bit more edges in here, a uh, little bit of little lines um, to break up that flat value. And then from this point, I can go ahead and go right into um, some darker tones. And. Okay, I'm playing with you too. And I think we got five more minutes, so we'll. Uh, I bet we can, we can do this rocking through. Oh, so uh -oh. much fun to paint with you, Che. I gotta just like say thank you again, just for jumping on, and we should do this again sometime. It's just so I say much fun yes. To... <laughs> Let's do it. I love it. I, just I miss you. <laughs> I do too, girl. I do too. Um, you know, it's great to hear your voice again. I know that 
um, especially, you know, people out there. I know that some people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling. And uh, just keep your head up and know that this will pass. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for artists, also for just families out there. Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm well, I'm very blessed that you know I'm able to still work a little bit online. Um, but my wife's out of work, and uh, and so we all have to be very um, aware of people around us. So if you if you sense somebody struggling, your neighbors or somebody down the road, you know, check up check up on them. Say, you know, I'm just thinking about you. You know, do you need anything? You know, I'll, I can do what I can. Um, and it. so, yeah, uh, absolutely. That's something that we have to all be aware in this time. Um, yeah, these demos have been a, a real joy for me, too, and a chance to connect with people and really feel that our, our greater community out there, even in times when it's harder to be together, it's meant a lot. Um, yeah, definitely. All right, let's, um, uh, let's pull in a, a little, quick little person. What do you say? Okay, all right. Well, uh, uh -oh, oh, or are you oh, feeling oh. done? I don't know. Oh. Have, maybe not. I can put a person. I can put ten yeah, people. Yeah, look, I've got all me? this space in the foreground. What do I do down here? Uh, oh yeah, you you uh, see, I don't have that much space. Oh, uh, I, I oh, took oh. longer paper. <laughs> so what I'll, I'll just, do is I'll, I'll just, just put cut a, it. I'll just cut it. <laughs> no, we'll do. I'll do. Okay, I got a head in. I'm, I'm putting a head in there. I'll, okay. I'll are you using good old like cadmium red hue? Uh, so I mean, it's no, nice I'm using. I don't have cadmium red in this palette. I just have. I just have my cobalt. I'm sorry, my quinacridone coral oh, and i'm okay. gonna get my dark color here my I neutral know tint you're, you're, i know your cadmium blue. when you um when you have to uh, yeah i don't have it in my, i don't have it in this sketch pat sketch thing here i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of the head is red and someone's gonna do this little boop oh gosh uh -huh. okay it's still it's still very wet so uh, okay mine's not as wet <laughs> it's very wet and then so I'm, gonna not, I'm gonna do a smudge for the body huh yeah, just smudge for the body. So did and you then, like just take a sketchbook and just practice like a gajillion smudges of bodies and stuff to? Yes, and but one thing to remember is that to make sure that uh, that it's dry. So it's wet for me. So therefore, it's uh, it's really blooming on me. So you got to make sure this is dry. But I'll put a couple of different people um, here and just you know, just the essence of the, look, this. Look, the lines. You know, it. You know. Don't don't worry it's about you know don't worry too much about like oh it's they got you know yeah it's a pretty dress oh the person's got blue eyes no one no one can tell you know just kind of make you know just the essence of somebody little carrot shapes you know um and who knows you know it, it can again it just reads like somebody connect the shapes also so a lot of times you you're hiding these elements because you're connecting together. So you just get this essence of these people. So Che, I think we're, we're gonna have to close. We've got like 30 seconds. So one, um, I wanna really say thank you, thank you. And um, I'll be posting this to our YouTube and it'll be on the IGTV and I'll make sure to include uh, links to Che's work and um, follow him on Facebook too. He's been doing